Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Microsoft Office uh, course. If you are accessing this video on YouTube, this is a course taught on coolchats.com. So to have access to the material which the course was made from, you can visit coolchats.com. My name is Godwin and this is our third week. So we'll be learning week three. So if you are on coolchats.com, if this is your first time, if you go to courses, we have Microsoft Office and uh, Information Technology. So you click on it. Then you choose Microsoft. So Microsoft Office tools. Okay, that is it. And there are other focus. If you are interested ones to you could also then later on. So we have already considered book one. So we did all this all this bulleted uh item. So we've done all of them. And we um we've done with two as well. So we are now on week three. So what are we going to learn in week three? We will learn about page orientation, which is the position of the paper. So whether you want to, then we later on we see it's the position. So based on what you are doing and the kind of position that you want to position your page in order to do your typing, so that when you print it out, it will be just like that. So we'll talk about that. And we'll also talk about how you adjust the page margins. So by default, there are some margins, but based on what you are doing, you may like to adjust either the top or the bottom or the left and the right to suit whatever you are doing. So if, if that's the case, how are you going to do that? That's what we also consider. Then divide page into columns. So sometimes, you would like to divide the page into columns where you can have maybe three or two uh, columns where you can put the content inside. So we we'll also talk about that. Then we we'll also talk about header and footer. So sometimes, especially a company, if you're a company, or maybe if you're writing your final thesis, or you could also have the header and footer where then you write and uh, the, the text which will appear on each of the pages at the top and the bottom. Okay, so that's what we call the header and footer. That one will also consider it. Then you may also want to add page numbers. Then the page numbers, you may also decide that the front page should not have any number. So the subsequent pages, then they, so that they can also be, uh, they, they will be, be numbered. So the front page will be exempted from the number so that one to consider that now if you want to insert a page break we we'll also talk about it if you want to insert a blank page after you are you want another blank page uh, below it you can also you will consider it now if you want to have a cover page for your documentation you we'll also see how you can do that now, if you want to add a link to a test so that when someone clicks on the link, it takes a person to a website, you will also see how you can do that. Now, if you want to insert a comment or change a comment or delete a comment, you will also see that. So if you are doing your final thesis, your supervisor may add some comment to your document. So if you, if you also want to uh, reply or something, so that you submit the document, how you will be able to do that? You will see all these things. So let's get started. So, here we go with uh, three, you can one and with two. Contact me on the front page. If you log in, create a chat with an instructor. Again, you a chat with an instructor where you can send me, I can also reply you. Okay, page orientation. So, like I said, page is the position of your paper document so if you are going to document that will be positioned in this way 
this way. For example, maybe you want to write, let's say, for cell, and the paper where it will be positioned this way. It's called landscape. So you need to position your document this way. Now, if you are typing application for employment and other official documents, this is portrait. So you would like your page to be this. But the word document is portrait. So most cases, you only change it when you need a landscape for maybe you are doing a poster, uh, like for example, for sale, or we are closed, we are open, and all those posters that you do, the, the, paper, the paper will be positioned this way. So before you do the typing, I will use set it so that it will be positioned this way for you to do your typing. That's what we are going to consider. So there are two types of orientation. We have the portrait and the landscape. So this is a landscape and this is a portrait. So if somebody uh, uh, say, says, um, tell you that, oh, type this document in the landscape for me, you should know that it's talking about this way. And maybe you want tell the text to be very bold and this, and so you want it to be landscape, especially most for sales. And we are close or some notice that will be positioned this way. And you need to know how you can change your document to that form. Okay, so let's get started. So to by default it is portrait. So if you open your Word document for the first time, it's going to be portrait. So to change it to a different maybe landscape, you need to click on the layout tab. So in the, these tabs that we have over here, we have the home, we have the insert, we have the design, we have the layout, we have the references, we have the mailings, we have the review, we have the view. Okay, so this one on your web document, the layout tab, the, the, the one we have over here. Now, when you, you click on it, these options will, will, will consider most options. Consider most of these options, but what we are talking now is the so once you click on the orientation this drop down also comes so if you want by default it's on portrait so if you want landscape you just click on landscape then it change to landscape for you so let's to try and so i open document so as you can see the document is portrait like i told you that's the default document for the word document okay so if I want to change to landscape, it says click on the layout tab. So this is the layout tab. And this is orientation. So you click on orientation and that is the landscape. So when you click on the landscape, you can see that your document will change. Then you can do your typing in it. Okay, so, so that is a landscape. So you can do your typing. For example, if I want to write for cell, so I can have for cell. Inside. Now, I can increase my font. Last time we talked about how to increase your font. So you can change maybe to however font you see. So what you are doing. We want this one, then you can change one size, let's say 200. Okay, so if it's too big, then you can change it to maybe 100. Okay, so if it's too small, you can change it. Okay, so you can change it until maybe it's going to the other pages. So that's okay. And here you can type your number. So maybe zero two zero one two three four five is the number. One two three four five six seven eight eleven twelve one. Okay. So for the numbers, it's too much. So for now, I'll reduce it by later when you do the margins. You will see that I can also change the margin so that it can fit this space can reduce so that the number can go there. 
but for now I'll just change the size so that it's able to go there. Okay, so that's it. So that's your for sale. So you can print out and then if, if you are selling a car or whatever you are selling, you just print this out then. Okay, so let's move on. So this is one page one. You can have page two. So you can have page two. You can have page three. Okay. So now on the next stage, sometimes in your documentation, maybe you have a table somewhere in one of your pages. You want that page to be a landscape so that the page dimensions uh, so that the width of the, the columns of your pages will be big enough then you have to change that particular page to have a different orientation so for example if this is a portrait if I have my portrait and I only want one particular page to be landscape and the question is how am I able to do that so now I'll change my listen back to portrait okay so and this is page one this is page two and that's three and now page four okay so now let's say for example if this Let's say that's my cover page, and this is another page, and there's a table in page uh, three, and I want only that one to be landscape so that it will the, the spaces of the table columns will be big enough to show the text more vividly. So the question is, how will I be able to do that so that only that one will be um, landscape? So that's where we are now. Uh, so it says use different orientations in the same document. So to do that, it says place the cursor on the page that uh, on the page you wish to change the orientation. So it means that if I want to change the orientation for page three, I need to print and uh, put my cursor on it. So my cursor is over here. Okay. Now it says click page layout. So if you click page layout, so we are already we've already clicked page layout. And it says we click on the page setup to so the page setup dialog uh, box launcher. Okay, so when you launch it, so you just click here. That's this is where you launch your page setup. So when you click here, then you can change the orientation for that page. We want it landscape. Okay, now this is the quick part. They apply to this is choose this point forward. So we will choose this point forward so that from page three and four, they all be landscape. Okay, so this point forward. So both our page uh, three and four are now landscape. So if we, if we want our uh, page, for track to portrait, then we also have to set that page also, and we make it uh, portrait from that uh, page onward, so that that one, uh, that one and subsequent ones will be portrait. Okay, so we have page one and two uh, portraits, page three being landscape, then page four, because we said we were here, and we, we made a setting that is from that page forward. It has also affected the page four. If you have page five, if you have page six and the rest, it will all be affected. So now you need to click off here also. So that you also make the setting that from here to the other pages, they all be for a portrait. So that uh, you go, you set it back to the portrait where it used to be. So you follow the same steps. So while you are on that page, you want to set it back to portrait. You just click on the page setup over here, then 
you choose portrait this time then you, in the option this point forward so you choose this point forward okay so as you can see from any other subsequent pages that follows they will all be portraits but you have the one that you want the, it to be in the landscape so it's the same way if you have page five if you have page five You have page six. Then you have page seven. So let's assume I want my page uh, four, five to be uh, portrait, then six to be landscape. So now I'm on page six, so that's where I am. So I'll just go to the page setup. Then that one to I'll choose the landscape. Then I'll choose this point forward. So from that page six and seven onward, they all be landscape. Then I can go to page seven and set set it back to uh, portrait. Okay. So page six and seven onward. Okay. They all be landscape. Okay. So I can set this and other subsequent one back to the portraits that they used to be. If this one, if the two are going to be landscape, I can still maintain it. Then if page eight is going to be portrait, and that's where I will set it back to. So I will set that one and its subsequent uh, pages back to portrait. So I just click on that page where I want it to be back to portrait. Then I go to uh, page setup. Then I choose portrait. Then I choose this point forward. So once I click from that page onward, from that onward, so I can have the side also all the subsequent pages that I will have. They all be. I have this one uh, land, landscape, that one landscape, that one portrait, that one portrait, this one, this one portrait, and that one portrait. So that's how you. Um, change the orientation of the documents with different orientations. This one is very important. If you have tables in your document and you will be printing them in the uh, landscape version because uh, so that if the, especially if the table columns are many, it will be appropriate to print it in the landscape uh, form. So you need to make that uh, page that uh, the table is, you need to make it a uh, landscape. So the, this is the concept that you need to use. So if you don't want to do that, you follow this step. So I'm going over again. So you just click on where you want uh, to change the orientation. Once you click, you go to page setup. Okay. If you use this one, this one is for for everything. For the entire document, but if you want for part one, a particular page, you just have to go to click on that page, then you click on the page setup over here. Then the dialog that comes, you choose the orientation you want, then you choose and this point forward. So from that uh, point onward, the option you choose will affect them. So if you want the subsequent one. To be of different orientation, you go to the next page, then that one to you change the orientation, then you click this point forward. So the entire one will change back to the way it used to be. Okay. So since you have the video, you can go back to the video if you don't understand anything. See the way I did the previous one. Okay, so we are done with the orientation. So we we'll move on. Okay. So like I said, if the subsequent pages will be of different orientation, you can click on that page to uh, repeat step. So once you click on that page, you just repeat one, two, three, step one, two, three, four. Then the subsequent ones will also go back to the, uh, by, so when you choose, you choose the previous orientation that you want it to be, then you choose this point forward. So that subsequent, that page and the subsequent ones will be of that orientation. And adjust page margin. Okay. So like the for sale we were designing, sometimes we want the 
uh, text to be bigger so you don't want to leave my spaces so mice are the spaces you have from your work uh, space so last time we said we were leveling our work part here is your workspace where you can do your typing so all the boundaries around it the edges so if from year to year we call it uh, left margin at the top from year to year we call it top margin from year to year we call it right margin and from year to the document we call it bottom margin so based on what you are doing and the type of margin you want to give to your page so if you want to set your margin then you can just click on the margins okay so when you click on margins you can choose custom margins okay so with the custom margin tool if only for a particular uh, page tool you can choose the selection if you choose the whole document it will affect everything so based on the one you want to apply to you you choose that one so if in the actual uh, document that you have everything of the same and so when you just choose it to affect everything but if you want it to affect a particular one then you choose the uh, selection that you want it to be, uh, to be affected so maybe you want to reduce the top and the left and the bottom and the right So I'm choosing this selected session. Selected session. So okay, as you can see, I selected the area I want it to be affected. So it's only a thing, but the rest are the same. So if you want it to affect only a particular session, you just highlight it. But if the entire document, once you set it over here. If the entire document, once you set it over here, it will affect the entire document. In the situation where you want it to only affect some selection, you can just select that selection. So once you select them, you go to the page setup. And when you click on the page setup, then you can do your this and then you choose the selected sessions. So other than that, then if it's the forward one too, then that one you don't need to select if it will. The, the ones that it will follow is like we did for the orientation but if it's for a selected area then you just have to do that now with the orientation to you can also select if you want the orientation to affect a, a particular pages then you can as well select those pages so you can select those pages then you, you choose you, you come to the page setup so if you've selected the, the pages, then it's no longer going to be at uh, this point forward. Then it's going to be selected session. Then only those sessions will be affected with the orientation. Just like you saw for the margin. Okay, so for a margin which affect the entire document, once you come here and you choose, you can choose any of them based on the space that you want. So if you want narrow, you choose narrow. If, you, if this is a normal one. Okay, so if you want moderate, you choose. If you want wide, you choose. If you want mirror, you choose. If you want to write, enter your own details, and you choose on custom margins. So once you have your custom margins, then you can just change them over here the way that uh, suits you. So if it's the entire, if it's the entire document, you just by default it's going to be the whole document, unless maybe you, you highlight certain parts. So once you highlight certain part, then the selected option will open. So when you click on it, it will affect to the things that you've selected. Okay, so we continue. So we done that. Okay. 
now we are over here now if you are going to do the binding like you finished and you print out your document you are going to do binding now binding because of the holes that are made inside you need to leave extra uh, margin in it so that when the uh, holes are being uh, made it will not uh, affect your uh, type uh, document so in that case we use a gutter so we use this gutter position so if the binding will be over here then by default it's already there at the left so once it is at the left you adjust to the position where the binding will, will be okay so you can adjust and you can even print one uh, of the page and see the position if it's okay so once you've adjusted and you print out and it's okay then you can print the rest okay so my, the idea is that you leave a space for the holes so that it will not affect your document so when you are doing uh, binding then you should remember to leave this and data over there to create a space for the uh, holes that will be made so that it will not affect your document so that one too is just at the margin section, the custom margin. So when you click on custom margin, you can have this session there. So you can make those uh, sessions. So it's just on the custom margin. So when you go to custom margin, you have a data over here. So by default, it is zero. Okay. So if you want to create that space, then you just uh, just be increasing the way you want it. Okay, so you increase it the way you want it. And once you start to increase, you can see that they make the sign like the holes will come there. That's where the binding will be. So you can see the effect of it. Okay, so you adjust it to the ones that it will suit to. So like I advise. Okay, but this one I've only selected the option, so it's only affecting the, the ones I've selected. So in my previous document where I selected the margin for the pages, so here it is selected. But if you want that for the entire document, you can choose the whole document so that the data will affect uh, will affect that for the whole document. So however you want it. So the, once you, you you are done, you just click on OK. So you continue so dividing page into columns. So here, if you want to write uh, a document and you want to have two uh, columns, one at the left, one at the right, or you want to have three columns. So this is how you will do it. So in the uh, page layout, there is columns. So you put your you click on the columns the drop down will come so you can choose the number of columns that you want so the number of columns if it by default it is one by default it is one so you can choose if it is two you can click here if it's three you can click here if it's four uh, left you can click here if it is right you can click here if it's more you click on the more to get more options now if you're if your uh, columns will affect certain positions on your, your on your page, then you click on the more. Then that one to you will choose the forward and those those uh, those ones. This point forward, so that the subsequent ones are the ones that the number of columns will affect. So that the ones you have at the top will remain the the way it is. So the subsequent ones is the ones that will be affected. So if maybe your page two will be of three columns, then when you click on that place, then you click on columns and you choose this point forward. So from page three, page four, and the rest will be of that column. So when you get to a point that you want to change it to, you can change the column and you choose this point forward. So from that page onward to the rest, it will be, if you want it back to the one column, then from that page onward, when you click on one then you select this point forward so from all those from that current page the subsequent pages they all be of that column so 
if column, let's say for example, we want one of our pages to be on column, especially maybe the ones we have the portal. Okay, so let's say for example, I want this one to. So I just click on columns and I can choose the number of columns. Okay, over here. Now, because It's divided it into how many columns I choose there. So you can divide it into three. So if I have this font size, I'm going to take this font size. So we set the official font size of. I want it to be if I want this page to be of the particular columns, then I can just come here or I can as well select that section the page then. column then you can choose your column so if I want it to three I have three columns so you can type the value you have three so as you can these columns are, yeah, three, but the rest are more than three. Okay, so if you want only for one particular session, you just highlight. If you want the for the entire one, you choose this for this uh, point forward. Now, if you want it, then then the whole document. So the whole document, the actual number of columns as you want. Now, if you want to change by default, it has divided the columns into equal width. So, if you want to change the width yourself, then you untick this part. So, it will give you the possibility. So, there are three columns here. So, you have one, two, three. Then you can adjust the number of columns and the spacing you have between them. So, you can adjust them. So, the space, if you, if you untick here, so the space after. This one, then you write, you write it there, and then this after that one, you, are, you set it over here. The last one doesn't have any space because it will just be the border. So the spaces between them, you adjust them over here. If you don't want them to be of the equal uh, dimension, so you just click over here. So, for example, when you are using So if I want take this one, it will give me the possibility to adjust them. So if I don't want them to be of the same dimension, I can switch the one, maybe I can reduce this one a little bit. So as you can see, the while whilst I'm adjusting it, it is showing me the, the view so that I know which ones are more than which one. Okay, so you can just adjust them the way you want it. Maybe the one in the column one you want maybe to be of pure content so you just type it so the way you want it so well, once you are done then you just click on okay over here then you have header and footer so we use a header and footer for so we use a header and footer for uh, additional information normally the company use it for as their company headers, so they put their logo, their telephone numbers, address, and everything there. 
if you are a student if you want your student number and other details to be repeated on all the pages then you can have a page header in your pages so it will repeat on every page so to insert a page header you just go to that then if you want header you just click on header and there are a list of them so you choose the one that you want okay so the one that you think it suits you the best then you choose it let's say if i want this one this is the first one so the blank one the blank one you will type your content inside okay so i can type maybe so i can type maybe my name so Number. Okay. So as you can see, whatever I'm typing here, the same thing for the pages. Okay. So all this has my head, all the pages, all the things I am writing up. So if I want my footer, the footer is a button. The header one is a, the top and the footer is the bottom one. So if I want that of the footer, then I can just also so that one too I can choose if I want the default one, I can have it. Then maybe I have an additional information. Let's say let me just type maybe two charts over there. Okay. Now you see that on all the bottom I have the what I type over there. So that's what we use the header and the footer for. So you have information at the bottom. They are repeated on all the pages that you have. Unless you make the first page a cover page. So that one they, they do not have the header and the footer. But any other than that, each of them will all have the, and the what you write in the head and what you write in the footer. Okay. So we run that one too. So removing page number. So we are on page number. So to add a page number, the same approach you use the insert so to add a page number if you click on header and footer you still have that one but you can still if you are at home if you are at home and you click on insert so it is below your header and footer so you just choose page number then you choose the format you want so there are a list of them so you can choose the format you want so so the page margin is to bottom bottom of page so if you want to add the bottom of page so most of them it is something like this so if you want it something like this too so however the format you want it so let me choose this one okay so as you can see each of the pages have been numbered now what if my one page is a cover page so i don't want the uh, pages uh, to start from there so if you don't want the pages to start from there you make that one a uh, different first page so you click on this different uh, first page so different first page will remove your number from there or it will make it that whatever you do over here will not affect the other pages. So you can delete that number over here, then it will not affect your other pages. So if I choose different first page over here, okay, I can delete my number one here. Okay, so even the number itself is gone, but the other numbers are there. Now, 
you can see that when I choose different first uh, uh, page, it, it's, it's starting from two because it's still saying that page, the first one has page one and page two. So if you don't want that one, then you can choose uh, zero. So you can start at zero. So let, let's say, for example, let me try and see. So when you click on the page number, you go to format uh, page numbers. Okay, so you can have start at, so here you can make the start to start from zero. Okay, so if I click start from zero, it means the subsequent one will be from uh, to zero. So here our first page header is going to be zero. So the subsequent one will start from one, then two, three, and so on. Okay, in that case, our page number one not number. So no number. So that is it. So so we continue. So we've added page numbers. Then we've been able to remove page numbers using the format. So in the page number, if the first one you don't want the page, you choose different first page. When you click on the footer and header, if you're on the home page, you click on edit. If you are here, you get the different first page. If you are here, and you click on that. In the header and footer, you click on edit. You choose its header or footer, any one of them. So when you click, this one comes where you see the different first page. So you just click on different first page. You could just click on that one. Then it will make this and the first page different from the other ones. Now, once it takes that number off, it starts from two, three, four, and the rest. So if you start from one, then you make the page number this one to be zero. Then the subsequent one will start from one, two, three, and so on. Okay, so we continue. Okay, so as I was explained, so you start at zero. Then insert page break. Okay, so now. You, maybe you are typing something and you want it to appear on the next page. Now, instead of you to be pressing, uh, so in this, okay, so maybe I'm, I'll change the font, this one, this font to a regular font size. Let me zoom it a little bit. Okay. So I have it in the regular. Okay. So maybe I'm typing something here. Okay. Maybe I decided to let uh, take this one to the next page. Now instead of uh, pressing the enter key, press and uh, putting the uh, from our previous week, we saw how you can push the test to the bottom by clicking at this the beginning uh, side of the test and then pressing the enter. So instead of me to be pressing enter, enter, enter until it gets to the bottom, I can just use the uh, page break. So it just goes to the next page to force this uh, line to move to the next page. Okay. So to go to use a page break, it says follow the following step. So you first of all place the cursor before the first letter of the test to move to the new page. So if I move, I want this test to move to a new page. I have to place uh, place my cursor over here, okay, at the before the first letter. So I put it over here. Now it says click on insert, then click on page break. So on your insert tab, there is page break. So you just click over here. So I can just insert the page break, okay. So as you can see, it has moved the page to the next uh, page. Now, another alternative is also you can press on control uh, and enter. So I'll undo this one. Okay. So the same thing is the second method. You can press on control, then you press enter. So control enter will push it to the next page, just like the page break. So 
to control enter as you can see it has moved it to the new page so you can use any of those methods either you go to insert then page break or control enter and it shifts the text to the new uh, page so that you can continue from there so that's page break then we go to page insert cover page so to insert a cover page is the same insert a place so i can see it is over here so once you click on it there are a list of them so you can choose the one that looks fancy for you so if i decide to choose so you just scroll through you can scroll through and check which one you is it's not for you okay so if i decide to use uh, okay. so if i decide to use this one okay so i just click on it okay so that become my cover page so i can uh, edit i can edit and put the date over here okay so you can just choose a date today is 20th 2020. Okay, so put a document title, change the document title. So maybe uh, Microsoft Word. Okay, so if the size is too big, you can just reduce the size of your font so it's 36 so you can put it to where it needs okay the subtitle if you don't want it you can just delete it okay okay so then the other ones okay so uh, it's using the name of your computer so if you want to change it some other information yeah, you can write maybe full chat. Oh, yeah. okay. So based on what you are doing, so if it's a school assignment, then you just write your details on the cover page. And maybe the topic it is about. Then if you have a subheading, then you can put it or maybe you want to write your index number and other details on it, then you can do it them as well. Okay, so that's with the uh, page. So remember the first page, which is the uh, zero page. Zero is our cover page. So our subsequent ones will be numbered one, two, three, and the rest. So let's say this page will be our table. Maybe we have a table of the landscape side. Okay, and maybe here too we have a table, so we put it in the land. I mean, we have an image, you want it to be, or the image is, is the place in the landscape. So, we also want to make this page a landscape. So, you can also have it that way. Okay, so you have it. You can have something like that. Then you, you can, as well, have, you, you see, we are having our full time, we are having our, I think the header with the window of the numbers also, but full time, if you decide, you can have the header. Amen. Okay, so that's it. If you want to remove the uh, page cover, you go through the same process. Then in the cover page, you just click remove current page, uh, current cover page. So you can just click on it, then it's it removed from it. Okay. So it's removed from it. So once it's removed, it has removed the other one you have to. So if you don't want to do that, you can also, if that's the latest one you've done, then you can just control Z, or you can push this one, then you make the number of page to start from zero again, then it comes back to that. Okay, so we continue. Then insert a blank uh, page. Maybe you are typing somewhere, you realize that, oh, I need an, an additional information over here. So I need an additional information. So if you want to insert a blank page after this uh, cursor, then I want to put your cursor 
where you want the next page to be. So when you, are, you have it there, you go to insert, then there is a blank page. So when you click on blank page, it will move your cursor to the next uh, page. Then you can type whatever you want to type over there. And that was no text over there. So the difference between the brick and the blank is that the blank is a page on its own, but about the brick it will push it to the next line. So if they are text there, it will still be there. It will still be there. But the blank page, a page which has no content, will be on that page. So that's between the brick and the blank page. So we continue. Set cover page, we've done that already. Remove cover page, we've done that. Now, setting upper length. The upper length is normally a text that when you click it, that it takes you to maybe a website most often. So maybe you want someone to click on a text that will direct the person to a, a website. For example, if I'm typing and I want the person to click on maybe cool chat and to take the person to coolchart.com and I can use an upper length so that when the person, the upper lengths are normally underlined so when the person knows that it's a link so once the person clicks on it or right click there will be an option where the person can click to visit the website so if you want setting the test to be of upper length then you still use the insert tab so while we are on the insert tab you click on upper link. So when you click on the upper link, then a, a dialog uh, appears. So you can type your test over here. So for example, if I want my test is school charts and the web address is schoolchart.com. So when the person clicks on that it goes to the link, I can just do that. Okay. So here a test which has been analyzed. Okay. So if the person clicks on on it, so control click, so control click will follow the person. If you control click, then it will take you to the website. Okay, so it takes you to the website. So it, the address needs to be I think HTTP. Let's check. So if you want to update, you highlight it, and then you click on upper link. Okay. So I think maybe the address needs to be HTTP. So let me copy over here. So I've updated it. So if you want to click the control, then you can click. Okay. So once you click on it, it will change the color that it has been clicked. Now if you want to remove, if you want to remove the upper link, you just right click it. You, uh, you can right click it and when you right click it the option comes so you can just click on remove upper link so when you click on remove upper link it will remove that upper link from it if you want to copy the upper link you can copy it if you want to open it so like the way we press control then we click to open it you can as well right click it then you choose open so when you choose open to then to open the website for you so it's still loading for the for the page. So we continue. So we've inserted the upper link. Okay. So it's it's expect HTTP or HTTP. So when you are typing your upper link, you should be mindful of mindful of it. So if you just enter something dot com without the HTTP or HTTPS, it uh, alerts you that it's not valid. So make sure you have your HTTPS or HTTP 
there. So you just go to the address bar of your website, then you copy the address there, then you come and paste it at the address uh, section. Okay. So, and to remove, copy or edit, you just right click on the upper link. So once you right click it, then you can choose the option you want. If you want to edit, like the way I highlighted it, and I click on the upper link, then I made the modification. You can as well click on edit, then it will get the uh, upper link dialog will come. Then you can edit your text as well as your link. When you done this, the open one will take you to the website. Remove it, you will take the link up or it will take it up from your document. Okay, so you continue. It's inserting the comment. So in your uh, project, if you are doing your final year project or if you are in a company and maybe you are doing documentation, it could be maybe a manual for uh, an application or software in your company and you have a, a boss. So you can uh, forward your document to your boss. Then your boss can also comment and tell you where you need to do the necessary changes. So once the comment comes and you want to reply, or maybe after you do the modification, you want to and delete the comment, how will you be able to do that? Okay, so the document will open up in that. So you know, the browser uh, uh, also. Okay, so to insert, delete, or change a comment, just you insert a comment, select the text you want to comment on, and click at the end of the text. The browser is freezing. So you can select the test that you want to comment on. So once you've done that, you can click on the review tab. So in the review tab, there is new comments. So you click on new comment, then you can type in your comment there. Now, if you want, uh, if a, a comment has been written, then there is a, a, a reply balloon around the comment. So if you want to reply the comment, you just click on the reply button. Then there will be a, a, a box that you can type in your comment inside it. Okay, so this is a reply button. So you just click on the reply button. Then you can type in your reply just like it is over here. So this is the comment. Then I, the reply was clicked. Then just type in your comment. In the time the comment was read, in the time that it was replied, it's also there. Now to delete a comment, you just go the same way. When you click on it, there is delete. Now on this delete, if you click, there is then delete all comments. So if you want to delete all comments, maybe if the, uh, everything has been finalized. So you want to take off the comment from the document. So when you go to review, then delete, then you can choose to delete all comments, to delete all the comments. Now if you want to delete them one by one, so when you click on next, then it moves to the next comment, so you can delete the ones that you want. When you click on next, it moves to the next comment, then you can click on the one that you want to delete. Okay, so let's the comments. That's our final session, then we can take a short revision, then that will be the end for this week. Okay, so let's say I want to add comments over here, so I can highlight it. Okay, or at the end of this part two, I can put my lesson here. Then I go to review the new comment. Okay, so that's the new comment. So I can type, so I can type the comments I want to make. So Okay. Now, once you enter, it is there. Okay. Now, if I want to enter another one, maybe I want to enter this one. 
So either you put your uh, cursor here or you highlight the text you want to comment on. Then you click on new comment. Okay. So this is page one. Okay. So let's say for example, this document was brought to you and you want to reply. Okay, reply here. So you just click that comment or when you hover your on it, the reply comes. So when you click on it, then you can just your comment there. So yeah. Maybe I'll check it out. out. So once you are done on that, so once you are done that, so like I say, it's to delete. As well, select your text, then you can choose to delete, to delete it. Let's move on next, next. So when you click on this, choose that one. Then if you want to delete, then you can delete it. Okay. okay. So you can choose one or another next. And when you choose, then you just click on delete. Okay. So if you want to delete them one by one, then you click on this, then delete, then delete. But if you want to delete everything, then you just click at the bottom. And choose delete all comments in the document. So, so let's say for example, you guys have finalized everything, and that's the final version of it. So there won't be any comments, and you want to print it out, then you can just take out the comments, and then you can get to official document. What kind of passes my default browser? I don't even know how to change them. I only need the installation and production to complete Okay, so it is trying to open the upper link, but the browser is freezing. So that is the end for today. So we will revise. So you can insert a comment. So to insert a comment, you just go to the review tab, then you can highlight your can highlight your uh, text that you want to comment on, or you can put the case at the end of your test. Then you go to review. Then in the review, you click on new comments. So in the new comment, then you can just enter. So you click on new comment. Then you can enter your comment. And if you want to reply a comment, when you hover over it, when you put the mouse over it, or the mouse gets closer to the comment, there will be a reply button. So just click on reply, then you can reply to the comment. Now if you want to delete a comment, you can use the next button. If not, maybe in multiple comments. Then you click on this, it select the uh, comment. So you can use the delete button to delete it. Then you click on this, select the comment, then you use the delete button. But if you want to delete all the comments in the document, you just click on delete. Then you select delete all. Then we also saw how you can use an uh, upper link. Okay. And the upper link, you are also supposed to take note that it's supposed to be HTTP or HTTPS. You just write the domain in there. It complains that it's not of correct descent. So you just have to go to the web address, then you copy and paste the address over there and over here then the test that you show for the user to click on it you type it over here now if you already type your document and you want to have test for it then that one you have to highlight up your your where you want the test to be affected so let's say for example if i want to maybe i've already typed two charts over here Okay, and I want uh, the hyperlink to affect it. In the previous one, we click on hyperlink and we type the test and we type the address. But let's say, for example, you've already typed the test and you want to add hyperlink to it. So you just select the test. Okay, then you, you still go to set the hyperlink. Okay, so once you've selected the test, it will be over there. Then you can have your HTTP. Yes, then you can choose that one.
or you just type or you go and copy from your address bar of your browser and then you paste it over here then you click it then it will have it there now if you don't if the color the default color that it has set for you you, you don't uh, want that one you can modify it you change it to the way the default the one that was okay if you don't want it to be underlined so you can take the underline off okay so however you want to do it so if the person have to click the person can right click it even if you hover on the uh, link it tells you that there's a link so it, it gives you a hint that you should control press control then you uh, click on the link to go to the link which has been put in the test Now we also saw how you can insert a cover a page. So inserting a cover page, inserting a, a, a blank page, inserting a, a page break, they are all as one place. So the key thing is that for blank and page break, you put the cursor at where you want the blank and the new page to follow. And the uh, page break to so put the cursor at where you want to push the test. To the next page and that one you put the, the cursor at the beginning of your test the first before the first letter of your test you put your cursor there then you can use a, a page break so you can follow the insert then a page break or you can as well uh, click on uh, control then enter then it push that test to the new line right the next page now we also came to numbering the page now if you want to remove the front page uh, numbering then you can as well make it a first page so you make a different first page for you to take off the number from there then you, you format the number so to format the number you go to number so when you click on edit uh, footer edit edit footer then edit this um, Boss rebounds, then you can choose the page number and format numbers. Then the format numbers will start at zero, so the front page will be number zero, but the number will not show. Then the subsequent ones will be one, two, three, and there. Then the choosing of page numbers when you click on page numbers, so insert then page numbers, so there will be a list of them. Then you can choose the one that you want. Then for the headers to insert, then you go to headers, then you can choose the header that you want, the footer to you go to insert, then footer, then you can choose the footer that you want. Now adding columns to uh, your page. Now if you if you want to add columns to a particular page, to not to affect the entire page, then you use the more option. In the more option, you can choose this point forward. Or you can highlight the place where you want and that to be affected. So that one to be the drop down will be this selected test, and you can choose uh, your your column so that it will affect on that position. Then we also saw about margin, custom margin, where you yourself will enter your values. So you can just you can click on these arrow keys. To be changing the values or you can just type your own values or also there now if you are going to bind your book you can create a space for your binding so you can just adjust it over here so there will be no space so that when the holes are made it will not affect your test and for custom margin or any other margin margin then you can choose any of these options if you want to enter it yourself then custom margins Okay, so layout margins you choose the option orientation to layout orientation orientation to we saw that you make different pages to have different orientation for example if you have an image on a page and you want the image to be of landscape you have to make that page landscape so we also saw how you can do that so to do that you follow the steps listed over here 
So you place a cursor on the page we use to change the orientation. Then you click page layout. So on the page layout, you see page setup box. So you just click on it. So on it, you have apply to uh, boss. You choose this point forward. So from that current page to the subsequent pages, we all have that orientation. If you don't want that, then when you move to the next page, you also go to follow this step to make from that page onward to the rest to go back to the page that the default uh, orientation that it used to be. Other than that, you can select the place where you want the orientation to really affect it. So if you've selected that option, then instead of this point forward, it will be selected test. It will only affect the area where you selected. Okay. So we also saw the difference between portrait and landscape. Okay. So that is it for today. And I hope you enjoy the program. And this is very important, especially if you are a student where you're doing documentation. And if you have been secretarial work, many people come to do uh for sale. If you are working in a cafe or any other place, many people come to do for sale. So in the process, you have to put it in the landscape. Then you can also reduce the margin so that the test can be big enough to cover the most of the spaces. So that if somebody is standing from a distance, the person will be able to see the test. Okay. So you know where to start me. You just go to home page, and then you log in, then you click on chat with an instructor. You can send me a message if you want to do something that I have not taught you uh, on the video. I try to cover as much as I can, but there may be something you make that you want to uh, do, but you may have be having challenge. You can as well send me a message, then we can figure it out how to do about it. But enjoy the rest of the day, and hope to see you in a subsequent day. Bye.